Hey everybody, I'm Jordan, a product manager on the Semantic Layer team. We GA'd the Semantic Layer last fall and have had some really exciting momentum these past six months, including a 600% growth in query metrics since January. And we're building on that momentum by sharing new features and functionality today. It's been great working with our early customers to help them leverage the semantic layer to scale the impact of their data teams. Hans Nelson, the CDO at Brightside Health, said the semantic layer allows them to provide business users and customers with the data they need when and where they need it. We absolutely love to see it, and it's very validating for our mission to hear quotes like this from our customers. In planning our roadmap for the semantic layer, a top priority has been delivering what we call enterprise-ready features, the types of things you've come to expect from your SaaS providers that give you the confidence to adopt and embrace a service at enterprise scale. We're focusing on four areas, access controls, security, caching, and integrations. Let's talk about access controls. You're investing in a semantic layer because you want to democratize data access across your company in a way that is accessible, governed, and streamlined. That means that certain people or departments should have access to certain data and should be precluded from viewing or querying other types of data. Trust me when I say we are very excited to introduce the concept of access controls to the DBT semantic layer. Today, we're pre-announcing a few enhancements that will give you more granularity, control, and precision to access controls within the semantic layer. Up until today, our semantic layer respects the physical policies that you've defined in your underlying data platform on a row and column level basis. But the limitation is that it only resolves to a single credential, which isn't realistic in practice. You want to support many users across various groups or departments with nuanced permissions and roles at these levels. And you need a solution that's flexible enough to meet your unique needs. Starting next month, you'll be able to create multiple credentials and map those to service tokens that can be used for downstream authentication. This means that as users from different groups across your company, like the data team, the sales team, or your marketing org can query the semantic layer, they'll have curated access to only the underlying data that they are permitted to see for the group that they are associated with. From there, we'll be applying even more granularity to the semantic layer access at the user level. You'll have the option to either reuse the developer credentials you've already set in DBT Cloud, or you can customize your own semantic layer user credentials. This is expected to go into preview at the end of July. So what's next for access controls? Our medium term roadmap, we're prioritizing new capabilities that make collaboration both more streamlined and intertwined with dbt cloud. We plan to expand user level access to more than just dbt cloud users so that any downstream data consumer can quickly and easily interact with the semantic layer. Secondly, we plan to incorporate logical access controls beyond physical access of what underlying data can be queried into the semantic layer. Predicated on this, we plan for the semantic layer to be interoperable with dbt mesh so that the governance and access rules you've configured in mesh will be extended to the consumption of the semantic layer. More on the topic of enterprise support. We're further unifying the semantic layer experience with the underlying dbt cloud experience with the GA of SSO and private link. You can now develop against and test the semantic layer in the cloud CLI with your developer credentials using SSO. Unifying semantic layer development with model development is an important step in the maturity of the semantic layer and creating a cohesive experience with the rest of the DBT platform. The semantic layer now supports using private link for customers who have it enabled. This is important for customers with sensitive data that cannot pass through the public internet. More tightly integrating the semantic layer experience with the rest of dbt cloud is essential as we mature our offering and we're excited about these quality of life improvements and the productivity that they unlock we are also thrilled to announce that caching is now ga for the semantic layer we shipped two layers of caching result caching and declarative caching result caching leverages your data platform's built-in cache so the same query request will be faster on subsequent runs Declarative caching gives you even more power and control to explicitly pre-warm the cache for your most relevant business metrics. Let me walk you through a quick demo to show you the declarative cache in action. 
Let's pretend that I'm the VP of revenue for the Jaffle shop. I look at a KPI dashboard every week to prepare for a weekly business review. We're going to do a head-to-head -head speed test to see how the same dashboard performs with and without caching. I've disabled the built-in hex caching and I'm running these queries in a new Snowflake session to make sure I'm not hitting the Snowflake result cache. This should be a true test of the declarative cache in the semantic layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish the changes on these dashboards and open up that dashboard in a new tab. Okay, so we're gonna see how, how long this takes to load. So I'll start my timer. There's a bit of latency that's introduced from Hex as it starts up its app, but it looks like the components are now loading. So um, I should see, oh, there we go. I see weekly orders, weekly revenue, but this orders by city uh, tile seems to be taking longer to load. Oh, there we go. We have a spinner in Hex that's come up. At this point, I'm starting to get a bit annoyed. I need this data for my weekly business review. At this point, maybe I just don't get the data, or maybe I go to another source that loads faster, but maybe isn't as accurate. There we go. So the data did finally finish loading. It took about 42 seconds to load. And I would say this latency really isn't acceptable for a dashboard that's this important and used this often by your organization. Next, we're going to test the same dashboard, but using the semantic layer cache. So I have the same dashboard that's querying the semantic layer, but I've set it to read from the cache that I've populated for the metrics in this dashboard. So we'll go ahead and publish this dashboard, restart my timer, and see how long this one takes to load. So like I said, Hex is now starting up. So there's a bit of latency introduced there. Um, and we are starting to load our components. Oh, there we go. Looks like everything loaded. So that took about 15 seconds versus 42 for the last dashboard. So, you know, about a 3x speed up from introducing caching. That is hugely significant and really good for the user experience. And now I just want to show you um, in the Snowflake console how much latency we're actually cutting out by introducing the cache for these metrics. So here is that um, count of orders by city, which is reading from this cache table that's been created in our warehouse. And you can see that this query took only 571 milliseconds to return. Now that same query that's reading from the source data here took 29 seconds to return. And that's where a lot of that uh, difference in speed and latency came from between the two dashboards. This is really important to providing a great experience for your business users, building trust in your data team and fostering a data-driven culture. I hope you enjoyed that demo. I had a ton of fun recording it. I feel like these head-to-head -head speed tests are a great way to show off a feature like caching that is really meant to optimize performance. Next, let's talk about our integrations. As we know, a key benefit of using a semantic layer is to ensure that the metrics that drive your business decisions are consistent, regardless of what tool they're queried in. The DBT semantic layer has native first-class integrations with a number of analytics tools, and we're excited today to share that the Google Sheets and Tableau connector for server and desktop are now both GA. You should now be fully confident in taking these use cases to production with new and improved collaboration workflows in each. As part of the Google Sheets GA, you'll notice a few collaboration and productivity enhancements. You no longer need to trudge through rebuilding queries and instead can leverage in-app save selections to pick up where you left off. You can also enjoy faster timed insights by using save queries as a jumping off point to explore your data. The semantic layer GUI in Google Sheets now matches the functionality of our APIs, so any dimension you query in Google Sheets can be rendered as if you were using our APIs to query. With the Tableau desktop and server GA, we support relative dates and parameters, save queries for efficiency and collaboration unlocks, and are incorporating the full capabilities of our APIs into the Tableau front end user experience. Our Tableau GA is an important milestone in our partnership with Tableau and our path towards being supported on Tableau Cloud. And a shameless plug, if you're interested in using Tableau Cloud with the semantic layer, please talk to your Tableau rep so that they understand the urgency of getting integration stood up. Nothing applies pressure to a product team like hearing direct customer feedback, and we really appreciate it. 
Backing up, a big reason to invest in a semantic layer is to get out ahead of governance and maintainability issues. We want to take complex logic that was once written in SQL or BI tools and centralize it in dbt cloud, making it governed, managed, modular, and usable wherever your teams consume data. Much like the dbt ethos, the dbt semantic layer allows you to build metrics as modular components that can be built upon and referenced. As a quick example, let's take a look at the manual old school way of defining and querying metrics. Here's a definition of revenue that one of my data engineers dutifully, but probably not so expeditiously, built as a roll-up table in dbt. They're manually denormalizing the data as part of their DAG. And then they may have applied additional logic to these calculations in a downstream BI tool like Tableau. From a governance perspective, there's no possible way that your team is going to be able to maintain this metric definition. Drake says no thanks to this type of DAG. By building and centralizing these metrics in the semantic layer, you're drastically reducing complexity while also improving governance and security. Instead of creating a roll-up table and applying additional logic in Tableau, you're creating a modular fact and dim table, and then letting the semantic layer do the aggregation and joins or denormalization at query time. This leads to a clean, short, and maintainable DAG and central metric definitions that you can federate out to your BI tools. Drake says yes to this type of DAG. And Wonka also approves. The dbt semantic layer is powered by metric flow a flexible SQL query generation package designed to streamline metric creation for diverse business needs. And we continue to make improvements to metric flow to make it even more powerful in helping teams collaborate around metrics. An example that we're excited to launch today is a new feature called Metrics as Dimensions. There are situations when you want to reference a metric in the filter of another metric. For example, at dbt, our definition of an activated account is an account that has more than five model runs. There are two metrics that we need here to create this definition of activated accounts, model runs and accounts. Here's the metric flow specification of how you would define a metric like this, where you would put the data model runs scoped the account entity as a filter and say, count up only the accounts that have more than five model runs. We render the metric, as, the metric filter as a subquery and then join to the outer metric query on common dimensions. Instead of needing to write this logic into your DAG, you can scope it directly to the metric it applies to, making it much easier to maintain. This is just one example of how we're investing in metric flow to make it more powerful and flexible. There are a lot of other things on our roadmap, like supporting sub-daily granularity, time zones, custom calendars, more dynamic inputs and metric definitions, and many more, so that your teams can build and consume metrics with more velocity and accuracy and optimize governance and productivity as you make data a central part of every business decision.